Hi, this is Justin Kelly from 3GB Labs, and today this is a follow-on of the sort of manual ELINT video that was done a while ago. And this video is going to be featuring uh, more of a, a, a newer feature, which is the automatic clustering of those PDWs that are being detected and then give you an identification based upon your entries in, in your database. So I have SEPTA running here and if you haven't seen the video previously of where I'm using the Pulse raster tools, please refer to that with regard to what all these plots mean and, and how to use them. But very briefly, this is a scattergram. I'm currently plotting pulse duration versus frequency. This is a, a time time raster. Um, this is pulse amplitude over time. Time is going up and down. Pulse frequency over time, duration over time, and PRI over time. Uh, there's only one line in each one of these because it's a pulse constant radar, which I have rastered up here. Um, it's at a constant amplitude, constant frequency, constant pulse duration, constant PRI. Right. Okay. So now I, with my eye, can hover on here and see my cursor down here um, about a 0.7 microsecond PD. Um, I collapse this, that's about a 1.62 millisecond PRI. You know, these are things I can measure by myself. I can actually see them. Now, what we've added is that inside of the options page for the Pulse Raster, there's a new functionality called clustering. You can configure how it's going to weigh the clustering and even what metrics it's going to use to do the pulse clustering. Um, you know, basically, the only thing I'm calculating is RFP to PRI amplitude, so that's all that's exposed to me. If AOA was there, or trip rate, or any other metric being provided inside of a PW stream, that could be used as well. And if I just say clustering enabled, um, you'll see that this little circle came in here. And if I look down at my these little pulse clusters down here, I can see that it's picking out the frequency, uh, the PD, you know, and, and the PRI pretty, pretty reliably. Um, it is tagging that, so that's ID3. ID3, it's saying, is present 100% of the time. You may see some fluctuation there. Um, this is simulated data. I do have some false detects in here, so it's... Um, I did set it such that there's a, a little bit of noise inside of this data stream, so it's false alarming a little bit, but that's okay. Okay, so what do you do once you have these clusters? Well, you can save a report, and that will save all of the clusters that have been detected so far in a CSV format. The other way you can do this is... Um, you can actually try to identify it. So if I go to e, the emitter database here, um, this is a function now off of the pull down under Windows. So you got the emitter database. And this is a unclassified repository. There's not a lot of detail in here. It's a bunch of weather radars. So there's it's not the most exciting thing, but it does you know demonstrate how you can use this. The format that is used to add emitters in here is just a standard XML that can be provided. Um, you can import and append to the database or you know, wipe it, that's fine. And then if I go to the emitter detector, which is under Pulse Analyzer Emitter Detector, you can actually see it's, as soon as I turned it on, um, it identified that cluster, and uh, here, I'll move this over so you actually see it turn on. Just turn this off. Um, you should see all these go down. I'll clear that inactive. Turn it on. Boom. So it's, it's pretty quick. Uh, on the ID, it's going to give me information such as uh, a, a nickname, if it has a nickname, 
Uh, these are all the same emitter. The modes are very, very similar. That's why it picked out all four. Uh, the frequency it's picked up that called that ID, the duration, PRI, and then the last scene. If, if we can weigh a confidence, it'll, it'll give that as well. Um, you can select this. I'll move this back over. And uh, you didn't see it, but when I selected this, it actually did hyperlink me to the emitter database entry there. Like I said, there's not a lot of excitement in this mode. This is a weather, a weather radar. It's going to give me the RF min, max, PD, PRI, et cetera, scan time. So not a lot of, um, no comments or anything like that. But the XML format does allow for comments and more than one mode of operation or platform or associated uh, platform or maybe associated systems. So you can add all those in as a function of comments. And then uh, you can right click on this and say generate report. Uh, that's going to generate a flat text file with the metadata from the intercept uh, as well as you know, any information that was gleaned from, from the database. So that's it. It's pretty easy to use. Um, you really just need to have the pulse detector going um, with the clustering turned on. And as long as you have some information inside of that database, it's going to try to actually uh, zero in, identify the signal, and then give you some sort of result. Okay, if you have any questions, uh, email info at 3db-labs.com, and have a good day. Thanks.